Today we are going to create a text in a landscape. Hello my friends and let's get started with another Affinity Photo tutorial. So this is the picture that we are going to use. We have the sun in the background so make sure when you lay out the shadow in the picture that it follows the actual light structure of sorts in the picture. Here we can see we have a tree and the shadow is coming towards us and getting bigger so this gives us kind of a guideline of where we want to go with that. I will delete the other layers and then the rest is kind of simple. Let's create a text first. It says words. It's just a demo text. You can write whatever you want of course and uh, we, we need two versions of that. So I make the first one white for the text and then I duplicate that one and make the other one black for the shadow. There we go and let's rename them this one is the shadow layer and the other one is going to be our text layer. There we go. Okay, so first we need to adjust the text layer and be sure to understand that when you click the perspective tool that we're going to use next that the text is converted to pixel so you can't change the text afterwards. You can't write anything else after this is changed. It's not a smart layer like in Photoshop. It will just convert it to pixel. Okay, there we go. Let's get started. Um, you can turn off the grid here so you see the text more clearly and then just arrange it and make sure that you understand you have this perspective, what is called perspective foreshortening. So when uh, when an object turns into 3D perspective, so for example, it's turned like this, it's getting shorter. You can see now it looks like the text is really long. So this is not the right effect. If you want to have this smaller, you have to bring it uh, closer to the text itself. You see? But we are not going to make the text that high. Uh, maybe make it that high like this bring this closer. Let's see what feels right. This is a lot about does it feel okay? Is it what I want to have as a result? There we go. Maybe bring this even closer. Uh, yes, I think this looks good. Okay, let's hit apply. So now we have this text and now we have to bend the shadow. The reason why we don't duplicate now is because using the perspective tool on something that has already been applied into a perspective is pretty hard so it's easier to start from just a flat object. So let's take this one, click on arrange and click on flip vertically so it's upside down and then we basically are going to do the same thing again. Make sure that these on the left side the, the layer is lining up with the text and then click on perspective, hide the grid and just bend it so it looks like the light is coming from the sun. Let's see. And of course make sure that the font is connecting on the right positions in the lower part of our text so they are not somewhere else in a position where they shouldn't be doesn't have to be super perfect but it should be somewhat um, good. Maybe this should line up a little bit different because of the sun. Let's see what we can do here. Of course you can also use the, the, the ground as a guide to show you which is the best um, solution for the shadow. There we go think this is pretty okay. It should be a bit closer for my feeling. It's kind of a back and forth so it's it's a bit of a fight with this kind of perspective tool but yeah this list looks good enough. Okay that's perfect. Okay let's apply this. Yeah that looks good. Uh, make sure that the text layer is above the shadow layer so it hides um, the shadow below it. You see, so like this. Let's bring this down a little bit. Okay, good. 
And the next thing we are going to do is we are going to duplicate the shadow layer because we want to have a little bit of a sharper shadow and a little bit of the more distance uh, layer should be more um, blurred. So let's duplicate this one. And I will first do the blurred layer. So I'm seeing what's going on. So let's go to effects. Uh, let's first set the blend mode to multiply. And then we will go to effects, Gaussian blur. And we can blur this so it looks good enough, but we can still see um, the writing. There we go, maybe like this. Okay. And now we go to the other layer. We have, we have this. We also set it to multiply. And we can now um, reduce the opacity. You see, so this is blending into uh, the ground. And we do the same with the other layer, of course. There we go. And you can see now it's not kind of, it's not the right effect that we want to have. So what we need to do is go to the lower layer, the sharper shadow, use our eraser and just erase the top part because it has to be sharper when it's closer to the text. So just erase this part here to um, arrange where it feels good. Maybe like this is okay. Then we display the other shadow again, and there we do the opposite, basically. So we will delete the part that is closer to our text. Not all of it, just a little bit. There we go. Okay, now let's turn both on and adjust the opacity so it looks good enough or it looks like the effect that we want to have. There we go. Okay. Maybe here a little bit more. Good. All right. The next thing we're going to do is you see that the text doesn't feel like it's sitting inside of the landscape and we want to reach that effect. So click on the text layer and click on effects and then down here on 3D. And you want to click on this little wrench because this gives you a lot more options. And these options are really important for us because we have light sources, we have ambient light, and we have the specular color in our picture. Let's start with the um, ambient light. So the ambient light is basically the light of, how can I say, the space all around, like the lights, feeling the light situation that you have in your picture. So let's take some kind of yellow U up here like this. Click on it so it's applied to the picture. You can set how much of this ambient light you want to have on your, um, how can I say, on your object. And the next thing we're going to do is the light sources. And if you have an outside picture, you can just think about that light in a sky is basically made of two colors, which is yellow from the sun and blue from the sky. So we will do two light sources, one that is a bit more yellow, one that is a bit more blue, and then we will try to blend them into each other so they look um, realistic. So let's go here, take some of this yellow up here, a bit of orange touch. There we go. And then we make a second light source and we will take a little bit of the blue, darkish blue down here and apply this too. And now you can basically adjust it with the saturation and um, the luminance down here. So how bright it is. You, you see it gives you a different effect. So let's see. You can also zoom in, of course, to give you a better view of how good it fits into the landscape. Let's go back to light source one, adjust this a little bit and you have to go a little bit back and forth to see which one is the right one for the effect you want to have. There we go. Adjust this again. So I think like this is good. Okay. And uh, the specular light, we also do. I will use a blue 
from the sky again. Let's go up here. One of these blues up here, which is not really blue actually, but it does look blue. Let's see, maybe over here. Okay. Wait, let's let's try to just pick an actual blue. All right. Can adjust these a little bit and just find out where you feel okay this looks good enough this is the effect that I want to have some is very subtle you have to really just move around uh, these faders and see what the effect is um, on the on the picture so you get a feeling for it and you adjust it in a way that feels right to you another thing that I like to do is that um, because I would say uh, on the lower part it has to be darker than on the upper part because there's more light. Um, let's just take a brush, make an extra layer here above the text and we will take a brush with black color. Where's our brush tool? There it is. And we have already selected black color. Make the brush pretty big and make its hardness zero, opacity 100%, pretty big and just move it along the lower part like this. Zip. You just stroke over this and then what you're gonna do is you hold control and click on the text layer so you get this kind of selection of the text click on mask so it creates a mask and then pull the mask up to the other how say other layer that we just created with this brush inside uh, we will set it to multiply and then just reduce the opacity to a very low value where we feel it's right. Let's remove the selection so we have a better view on what is going on. And you give it just a little bit. You see the lower part is getting just a little bit darker than the upper part. It makes it feel more realistic. So that's a very nice and subtle effect. And there we go. We have now a text in the landscape. Looks pretty good. It feels like it's in the landscape. The shadow feels like it's there. Um, you can, of course, play around a lot more with all these kind of settings to your taste, to what you want to achieve. And yeah, thank you for watching the video. I hope you had fun. If you want to see more videos, I do a new video every three days. So think about subscribing, think about liking the video. If you want to support me and get more support from my side, um, you can support me, uh, become a Patreon of my channel. You also get the original files with all the layers like this file here. You can live chat with me. You can post your uh, work and get feedback from me on Patreon. So it has a lot of different benefits to it. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Bye.